All right, just going to do a video explaining how the Catholic magisterium totally undermines the supremacy and sufficiency of God's word, and also undermines the supremacy of the Holy Ghost, which I'll probably be covering in a future video. But this will be mostly dealing with it, how it undermines the supremacy of scripture. And what is the Catholic magisterium, one might ask? Well, According to paragraph number 85 and paragraph 100 of the Catechism of the Catholic Church, it states that only the church authorities have the right to basically read and interpret scripture, and that private interpretations, which is ironically exactly what they do, uh, are, you know, you know, they're they, they against private interpretations, meanwhile, basically doing it themselves, I'll put it that way, uh, unknowingly, by the way, but essentially the catholic magisterium is how they control people they they don't want you reading the word of god for yourself you talk to any ex-catholic they'll tell you yeah my priest told me not to read the bible my priest told me just just be a good catholic you know just just follow the church you know they don't want their people reading the bible why because then when you read the when you read god's word for yourself you'll leave the catholic church you see i've heard catholics say anyone who's immense in history will leave protestantism will become a catholic well i'd counter that by saying anybody who is immersed in god's word will leave catholicism and become a bible believing christian because Protestantism, when you really get down to it, it's just repackaged Catholicism. It's all that it is. But side issue. But what are some? What, how does the Catholic magisterium undermine Scripture? Well, it undermines Scripture by the fact that Scripture is a standard for truth, and we see that all throughout God's Word. First of all, the Apostle Paul used the Scriptures to reason with the Jews and preach to them. Acts chapter seventeen, verse one to three. Now, when they had passed through and Amphilias, hope I'm saying that word, and Apollonia. And they came to Thessalonica, there was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures, not tradition, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ. He's using the scriptures to reason with them. Why? Because the word of God is the final standard for truth. And keep in mind that the apostles, this goes into my next point, the apostles were inspired with a genuine oral revelation from the Holy Ghost. And even then, they always directed people towards the Holy Scriptures for the determination of truth. They did not exalt, because the so-called apostolic traditions of Catholicism are just man-made philosophy invented, invented hundreds of years after the closing of the canon of Scripture in Revelation 22. But they always directed those towards the Holy Scriptures, those they were speaking to. Uh, the apostles did. Uh, Acts chapter 17, verse 11 to 12. Acts 17, verse 11 to 12. Uh, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Therefore many of them believed, also of honorable women, uh, which were Greeks, and of men, but a few, not a few. Notice how it's the scriptures that cause them to believe. Why? Well, you can compare this over to Second Timothy chapter two, or sorry, Second Timothy chapter three, verse fifteen to seventeen, talks about the scriptures are able to make the wise unto salvation. It's the word of God that saves you. You can also compare this with, um, I think it's First Peter chapter one, verse eighteen down to verse twenty-three. It talks about how you're born again by the word of God. In First John chapter five, verse, and this isn't in my notes; it's just off memory. First uh, John chapter five, verse, I believe it's ten down to verse thirteen, talks about how you believe the record God gave of His Son. What's that? The word of God. It's the word of God that saves you, not vain. These vain Catholic traditions will damn you to hell. It's that simple. Your rosaries, Hail Marys, all this other stuff, the purgatory, confession to a priest, that's going to damn you to hell. It's not the word of God. Uh, it's man-made workspace philosophy. Uh, next point is, the, is that the Apostle Paul said that the saint is not to think of men above the scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. And this verse is a really good one to use against uh, these papists. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, uh, that none of you, I'm sorry, that none of you, not sorry, that no one of you, sorry, be puffed up for one against another. Not good at reading on a computer, just I've established that before. But notice that, not to think of men above that which is written. You know, not to think of men, i.e., you know, church fathers or saints or popes or priests above that which is written the word of god but that's exactly what catholics do they think of their you go you just go on any catholic instagram page like 99 percent of it is quotes from you know this saint or quotes from so-called church fathers and very seldomly is it actually from god's word it's that simple next point is that jesus christ expected even his enemies to correctly interpret the scriptures by simply reading them and studying them uh, luke chapter 10 verse 25 to 28 i've covered this as well Luke chapter 10, verses 25, down to verse 28. 
And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. Notice that. He's telling him to go to the scriptures to get his answer. Not to, you know, vain, you know, unbiblical, uninspired traditions of men, which is exactly what the Catholic popes will tell their, their uh, flock to do. Next point is that Luke uh, begins by mentioning uninspired gospels by various Christians, then the oral tradition of the apostles of Christ, and concludes by stating that the scriptures alone will allow uh, Theophilus, I think that's how you say, it, say his name, uh, Theophilus, I think it's pretty sure how you say it, uh, it will allow him this, to know what the truth is, basically. Luke chapter 1, verse 1 to 4. And forgive me, by the way, I'm just not good at pronouncing some of these, you know, uh, Greek-sounding names. Uh, the only I, I've, I've only ever known English. I know a bit of Russian and a tiny bit of French and even some Hebrew, uh, but I'm just not good at pronouncing some of these Greek and Hebrew names. Just uh, a lot of it. Just not my expertise. But uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 1 to 4. For as much as many, I've, as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things, from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most, most excellent Theophilus, uh, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. Like I said, you know, he's mentioning uninspired gospels by various Christians and oral tradition, but he's concluding the fact that the scriptures alone will show you what the truth is. And to further back this thing up, because one of the little favorite little catchphrases of Roman Catholics, they'll say, well, Jesus Christ never said to read the Bible. Well, uh, he may not have said that exact wording, read the Bible, but if you read uh, Matthew chapter 21, verse 42 to 45, Matthew chapter 22, verse 29 to 33, Matthew chapter 19, verse 4 to 6, Matthew chapter t uh, and Matthew chapter 12, verse 3 to 5, Jesus Christ is actually rebuking his people, even the Pharisees, for not reading and searching the scriptures and getting their answer from scripture. So he may not have said that exact wording, read the Bible, but he's rebuking people for not reading scripture and understanding it. You know, and also in John chapter 5, verse 39 to 40, he instructs his enemies to, quote, search the scriptures, unquote. So he may not have said read the Bible, but what do you think the word search the scriptures mean? It means look through the Bible and get your answer. It's that simple. Yes, there was written scripture back then. Like, uh, contrary to what Catholics will say, there was written scripture that was available back then. It's that simple. So anyway, don't be deceived. The Roman Catholic Magisterium, like I said, totally undermines the sufficiency of God's word, which is able to make the wise into salvation, 2 Timothy 3.15. Uh, don't be deceived. Roman Catholicism is a cult, plain and simple. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.